Welcome to Electronica 2024. I'm here with Henrik, who is the general manager for energy infrastructure. Henrik, today we, behind us we've got the GAN-based solar inverter. Can you walk us through what that is and what's being featured here? Yeah, sure. Uh, so in this uh, reference design over here, we are basically showing the three different power conversion stages that are usually part of a solar inverter. So it starts um, with the MPPT stage or the boost converter that sits on the input from the solar panels. So solar panels providing power, you boost that up to a DC bus voltage. And then there is a power conversion stage that then is capable of uh, charge or discharge an energy storage system. So for that, we usually need to buck or boost uh, the power down to whatever voltage uh, the uh, energy storage system's battery needs. And then lastly, there is a power stage uh, in there as well that does the DC to AC conversion, basically pa providing power back out to the grid. All those three power conversion stages here, they are controlled by one single um, the P55C2000 microcontroller, and they all use our GAN technology. Great, so let's talk a little bit about the enabling technologies ranging from the microcontroller that's used to control the power stage to maybe the current, sens current sensing technology that we have, and we'll talk maybe about the GAN technology that we're using on here. Yeah. So let's start with the, the heart of the system. As you mentioned, we have one microcontroller, which is controlling all three uh, areas, it's controlling the entire board, is that correct? Yeah, so basically we are using one single microcontroller that we have put on one, uh, sim uh, uh, one same ground potential across those three power conversion stages. And then out of that microcontroller we generate all the PWMs and do all the voltage and current sensing needed for those three separate power stages. And we do then all the uh, processing needed for controlling those power stages on that one single microcontroller. What we're using for resources on the microcontroller is of course those high resolution PWMs that it has. Those high resolution PWMs are very good at helping us controlling um, those um, novel and new power conversion uh, topologies that we're using um, inside this demo. Good, so one of the most important things is the fact that we have more high resolution PWMs. I think in the past, is it fair to say that we would actually use multiple of these uh, C2000 devices to control these power stages, or is it pretty common to have a single MCU? No, most systems today use multiple, uh, use, use mu multiple MCUs to control the different power stages. And actually, in this uh, in this uh, in this uh, demo here, we're able to shrink it down to one single uh, single MCU and run everything um, uh, everything off of that. That gives us a couple of other benefits as well. One benefit is, of course, as well that we need less isolation between different microcontroller stages. We have less problems with with ground loops between uh, between the different uh, between different power stages. And ideally you should be at a lower cost point because you're not buying a single MCU for each individual power stage, right? Yes, of course, that also helps. And then maybe also if you think of it from a developer's standpoint, you might be able to do this with one single um, it's a single tool, you can use Code Composer Studio, you can run all those three different power stages, you can control them uh, together, uh, so that gives you simplicity as well. So I do want to learn a little bit more about the C2000 P55 device, which we are using on this reference design. Um, we do have more high resolution PWMs, uh, you know, we are running at a higher frequency. Can you kind of highlight what exactly we're doing that's actually pushing the limits in this reference design? Yeah, so as I said before, um, you know, on those uh, power conversion stages, there is a lot of um, calculations going on. So for example, in the uh, DC to AC converter, we then also need to take in consideration what the grid is doing, so because you're directly on the AC to DC converter side, you're directly uh, connected to the grid. So we have those current sensors there that we measure the grid and feed that back into the control loop as well. And you know, that will make this uh, inverter also possible to be um, a, um, an off-grid inverter. So in the, in the event that there, is no, uh, that there is no grid present, but we then have solar or energy storage resources that could provide us power, we could still run that without, uh, without the grid. Good, so you mentioned current sensing technology. I'd like to dive into that a little bit. Um, obviously, you probably have to measure some AC line voltage sensing or some other various points for current sense. Uh, what technology are you using here? 
So we actually, in this design, we're using a mixture of it. So, um, you know, in this, um, we have, TI has two main technologies for, for current sensing or isolated current sensing. We have the Hall effect based sensors and then we have shunt based uh, sensors. The Hall effect sensors, they are really, really good at when we need very, very fast uh, current sensing. And in, in this design where we use them GAN devices, we try to switch at very, very high switching frequencies. So that's where, uh, so that's where um, you know, the benefits from those Hall effect sensors really comes in. Then we have other, op uh, then we have other points in this reference design where we really need uh, very, very high accuracy. And that's also then where our shunt-based current sensing uh, can help us. Great, so we've got shunt-based current sensing, we've got hall-based sensing technologies. Pretty common for these end equipments to use multiple types of uh, current sense methodologies. Now, you mentioned GAN. Uh, we are using GAN in this, in this design. It is obviously a TI GAN. Can you give us some tidbits about what we're able to achieve in terms of switch frequency, density, efficiency? Yeah, sure, so on the um, efficiency side, the overall efficiency of this uh, reference design gets us up to about 97.5%. So that's from the DC input stage all the way out to the AAC grid, so to say, which is very high. That gives us um, a lot of different benefits. One benefit is, of course, that the uh, magnetic components of this design become smaller. This means that the inductors and the capacitors uh, gets a lot smaller. If you look at, look at this board, the inductors and the capacitor makes up most of the density uh, inside, the, inside a power converter. So if you can drive down the size of them, it's going to make the whole system smaller, lighter, lighter to, uh, to, uh, uh, easier to deploy. So that's one benefit. The other benefit is really comes on the thermal side because uh, obviously losses is something that you're going to have to, um, um, the, the power losses translates into, uh, in, into, uh, into heat. And that heat you need to get out of this board. Now in this board actually as we run it here, we just run it with a heat sink without any, uh, any particular active, uh, active cooling. And if we can lower it and make the uh, cooling system easier and simpler, that also saves cost, weight, and the, makes the overall design smaller. So this reference design, again, is powered by the C2000 or the P55 variant that we just announced. What is the switch frequency that you are running? So we are running at actually three different switching frequencies in the different power stages, and that is to, to really optimize the efficiency of each different power stage. So I think the maximum switching frequency we run is at about 500 uh, kilo, uh, kilohertz uh, for, the DC, uh, for the DC to DC converter. The AC to DC converter uh, runs at about 120, 140 kilohertz. Good, and this reference design is fully published on TI.com? It is pu fully published uh, on TI.com, and actually all the software that we are using inside this as well is also uh, available in our digital power uh, energy library. So if you'd like to learn more about our reference design, our C2000 with high resolution PWMs, or our GAN-based technology, please go to TI.com energy.